Speaker. Uh, Republican Leader Womack, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present priorities for fiscal year 2021. I want today to discuss healthcare technological advancements and deployment and energy solutions. Of course, I sit on the Committee on Energy and Commerce, and these are the priorities on the Republican side of the dais, at least in the, in the Committee on Energy and Commerce. First off, we know Americans care about how much they are spending on prescription drugs. They worry about their ability to afford the medications that they need. Some patients ration their insulin while others choose between medications and food. There is a bipartisan consensus that Congress can act to bring down prescription drug costs. We considered Medicare Part D reform, including capping seniors out of pocket costs. The Energy and Commerce and Ways and Means put out bipartisan requests for information and received more than 80 responses. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, these conversations were sidelined while attention was wrapped up in the Speaker's Bill, H.R. 3, last October. So I urge other members to consider the provisions included in H.R. 19, the Lower Cost More Cures Act of 2019. This bill includes bipartisan solutions to lower drug costs and protects access to new treatments and new cures. H.R. 19 does cap out-of-pocket costs in Medicare Part D, protecting seniors from the high cost of prescription drugs, and caps that at $3,100 a year, caps the cost of insulin at $50 a month. H.R. 19 also contains provisions aimed at access to prescription drugs in rural areas by reforming the so-called direct and indirect remuneration fees largely administered by pharmacy benefit managers. There is a lot that Congress can be doing to the cost, for the cost of drugs to deliver for the American people. H.R. 19 is an example of bipartisan policies that could become law and directly impact drug costs that patients incur. The provisions mentioned today are just some of the common sense and bipartisan solutions that should be considered. The fiscal year 2021 budget should include funding to ensure the United States preeminence in fifth generation mobile technology. The 5G rollout will require rural broadband deployment and a trained workforce to install the necessary infrastructure. In addition, the National Institute of Standards and Technology must have the resources to contribute to global 5G standards and the National Telecommunication and Information Agency must manage the federal spectrum. This includes working with the Federal Communications Commission and industry to auction spectrum and protect current incumbents. Additionally, consumers are concerned about their data privacy. The Energy and Commerce Committee is currently negotiating federal privacy law that will require the oversight of the Federal Trade Commission to ensure that industry does not engage in deceptive practices when implementing privacy policies. Federal Trade Commission will require technically trained personnel to fulfill this responsibility. Another technology, autonomous vehicles, the infamous self-driving car, will improve mobility and increase safety on our roadways, and we should prioritize funding for the National Highway Traffic Safety Agency to be able to certify the safety features of these vehicles, allow testing exemptions when necessary, but also issuing, issuing recalls and regulations where necessary. This includes expertise within the Office of Defects Investigations and a consumer-facing education campaign on recall completion. The traveling public deserves adequate resources to ensure their safety. The President's budget fun funds important energy research projects, including projects such as the Versatile Test Reactor, the Energy Story Storage Grand Challenge, and artificial intelligence capabilities. These smart investments in nuclear power, energy storage, and advanced computing will ensure energy independence and conservation for our future. Congress must consider resources for energy efficiency including programs like the Energy Star. This has saved Americans billions of dollars and certainly should be preserved to ensure consumers make informed energy decisions. And let me just say I agree with Ranking Member Womack about the absence of a budget. It is difficult to negotiate and navigate these issues without that. And in fact, yesterday in our hearing that we finally had on COVID-19, there was a lot of criticism about the president's budget, but it is difficult to criticize the president's budget 
when we will not propose our own budget in the People's House and have not for the last several Congresses. I appreciate the attention and I'll yield back my time.